Hello everybody, I'd like to welcome you to part 11 of this polymer clay sculpting demonstration where I'm finishing up pretty much this project on making a tiger's face. Uh, in this video, I want to make this into wall art, whereas right now it just it's just a face laying around. And I'd like to be able to hang it up on the wall. What I plan on doing in this video is removing the core and cutting out a piece of wood the same shape of it so I can just you know put a hole through it and hang it up on a nail or something. If you want to see more about what's going on here I'd suggest watching video 2 in this series as I build the core and I have it all taped down so you can see. But I'm just going to remove this foil. It shouldn't be very hard to do. For those of you curious about baking polymer or clay with tape in the oven, uh, it's never been a problem for me. It, um, this is actually what happens. It becomes extremely, I'm not even going to touch this, it's so, it looks wet, but it's not. It's just sticky where the heat has overly activated all that glue on the tape. And it should come off clean like it just did. And that is neat. You can see all the pieces where I put this together and the impressions of the tape are left on to the clay. It's actually lost a little weight just now. So this was the first part on what I want to do. It sits a little flatter now but to ensure that it's even flat, flatter I want to um, plain this on a piece of sandpaper. So that's what I'm going to do next. I do believe this is like 150 grit, 180 grit. Uh, it's glued down to where it's flat and it won't move around on me. And it's just big enough to where I only need one piece of sandpaper. And what I want to do is I want to gently plane the back side of this. It doesn't have to be perfectly flat. All I'm doing is is I'm going to be removing the higher areas trying to make it a little more even. This is so that the wood that I, the piece of wood that I cut out will mate better with this surface. It would be a lot more flush. If you have trouble telling when you're doing something like this, if it's sanded, you could take maybe some paint on your finger and just get it on here a little bit, let it dry and like maybe some black, water it down or whatever and when you go to sand it, it'll, it'll instantly reveal the high and low areas of when you're sanding something which is good when you're working with flat surface and stuff. I don't think I'll need to sand it anymore. I've got a good flat surface for that wood to bond to and it shouldn't appear like much of a gap when, when viewing it on the sides. So now I'm going to trace this out onto a piece of scrap wood. Okay, now what I have here, this is a scrap piece of, I do believe they call it like a fiberboard. It comes in three different styles. Uh, one is like a pegboard that you use to hang your tools in a garage. It's got a bunch of little holes drilled into it. Then there's th this kind right here where it's brown on both sides. And then they have it to where it's got a white finish on one side and brown on the other but I've had this for like three years it comes in a four foot by eight foot sheet and I'm still I still have some of this left over so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna use this material as a backing for this this will be really good for this piece I believe because it'll add structural integrity as well so let me just trace this out I'm trying to reach like under it as much as I can while tracing it because I, I don't want the wood to be seen from like looking at, looking at it head on. So like back in the ears I'm just trying to reach underneath it with the pen as much as I can. Uh. 
I've never really done woodworking before, other than maybe building custom speaker boxes and stuff. But this right here was really interesting using this machine. It was able to cut a line nearly as thin as the line that I drew on this wood. And I was able to follow almost exactly. Well, I mean, what a machine. It was just awesome. And it may appear like it's going super slow, but that's just an effect from the time lapse. I have this sped up really, really fast because I was going really slow. I was taking my time because from what I understand, the slower you are with this type of blade, the better the cut. But all in all, I think it turned out pretty decent. I'm happy with it. Now I'm going to be adding this uh, picture frame hanger. Uh, I didn't have to buy this. I just kind of borrowed it off of one of our picture frames because it they they all have two of them and we only use one at a time. So I thought that was pretty cool. Um, I just unscrewed it. Now I'm going to uh, um, screw it into this. Well guys, that pretty much sums it up for this video and for this series. This has got to be the most extensive project that I've done here on YouTube. 11 videos. And there'll be a final reveal up after this. But I, I honestly can say that I don't think I would have been over to do it without you. I really appreciate it so much. Thank you so much for watching this and for being a part of the whole project. You're all awesome. I'll see you here again soon. Thank you for watching.